Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the sixth video in the series of videos on endonology. Uh, in my previous video uh, I told you that uh, there were two school of thoughts. Uh, one school of thought was that cells are responsible for providing immunity to the living organism and the second school of thought uh, they were believing that the soluble components or the soluble mediators they are responsible for providing immunity to the living organisms and to prove their thoughts uh, uh, different sort of experiments they were carried out that I discussed in my last video. So this debate of cell versus the soluble mediators of immunity uh, that was there for a very long time and in order to find out the uh, active component of immunity the different researchers in the early 1900s they helped to characterize the different immune components present in the blood serum and these components they were able to provide immunity against uh, different sorts of the pathological uh, organisms and their products. Now what these researchers they characterized was that there are different components present in the blood serum and these different components are performing different sorts of immunological function. Now one of the uh, component, one of the immune component in the blood serum that these uh, researchers characterized was uh, antitoxins. They were calling them as the antitoxins because these antitoxins they were able to neutralize the toxins produced by different pathological organisms or different pathogenic organisms. So is this uh, immune component present in the blood serum, they were able to neutralize the toxins, so they were calling them is the antitoxin. And that makes sense because if you are uh, neutralizing toxin, the substance should be antitoxin. The second component they believed was that there are components in the blood serum that are able to precipitate the toxins and the, they were calling them as the precipitin. So these precipitin, they were actually the uh, immune component in the blood serum, they were able to precipitate the toxins. The third component they believed was that there are components, there are immune components in the blood serum, they are able to uh, agglutinate bacteria and these components they were called as the agglutinin. So these agglutinin were actually able to uh, agglutinate the bacteria or the uh, toxins produced by uh, these uh, bacteria. So these were the three things that they characterized. So the antitoxins, the precipitin and the agglutinin. There is a slight uh, difference between the uh, precipitation and the agglutination. So uh, precipitation happens uh, when uh, an antibody that interacts with the soluble components like a protein or a toxin and when they interact with each other they precipitate out from the solution. So this particular phenomena is known as the precipitation. When you talk about the agglutination uh, you may have observed when you do the uh, blood grouping or when you do the uh, blood typing for uh, the human beings uh, when these antibodies they interact with the red blood cells so there is interaction between the antibodies and the cells the red blood cells so they make a, a pre, they make a, a clump over there and that particular phenomena of making this uh, clump is known as the uh, agglutination so they were actually having these three things the antitoxins the precipitin and the agglutinin now initially it was thought that different uh, serum components are responsible for these three activities. By that I mean that they believe that for antitoxin you need a different components in the blood serum, the component of the precipitin that is different than the antitoxin and the agglutinin and the component responsible for the agglutination that was different than the antitoxin and then the precipitin. So initially it was thought that these activities are performed by different components of the immune system. So simply you can say there would be three types of the components in the uh, blood serum 
uh, one uh, acting as antitoxin, another one acting as the precipitin, and the third one acting as the agglutinin. But the researchers at that particular time, particularly the efforts of the Alvin Cabot in the 1930s, they were able to identify a fraction of the serum, which they called at that particular time is the gamma globulin. Now we call it is the immunoglobulin. So the effort of the Alvin Cabot along with the other researchers, they identified that this gamma globulin component of the serum or this gamma globulin fraction of the serum is responsible for all of these activities. They are responsible or they are working as antitoxin, they are working as precipitin and they are working as the uh, agglutinin. So they identified this particular fraction of the serum which at that particular time was called is the gamma globulin. Now we call them is the immunoglobulin. Now this uh, soluble active molecules uh, as we are talking about the uh, serum. So the active soluble uh, molecule in this immunoglobulin fraction of the serum it was uh, identified as the antibodies. Now these antibodies, uh, we will have a detailed discussion on them, but for this particular time, keep in mind that these are the proteins that are produced by the uh, B cells and these antibodies, they are present in the uh, blood and they are present in the serum part of the blood. So at that particular time, they say that the active, the soluble active molecule in this immunoglobulin fraction of the serum which is responsible uh, or which is acting is the uh, agglutinin, the precipitin and the antitoxin. They say that these are the antibodies which are performing these functions. Now as these antibodies I have told you, they are present in the body fluid. In this particular case, they are present in the serum and a serum is a body fluid. So as these antibodies, they are present in the body fluids at that particular time, the body fluids they were called is the body humors. So the immunity provided by these antibodies at that particular time was known as the humoral immunity or you can say the immunity provided by the body fluids. So as I've told you these antibodies they are present in the serum. Serum is a body fluid. At that particular time the body fluid was called is the humors. So the immunity uh, provided by these antibodies that is known as the humoral immunity. So what is the end of the story? Uh, you are doing these lot of experiments. So how these, how these experiments or how the results they are important for the human beings or how they are important clinically. In my next video I'll focus on a term which is known as the anti serum and these anti serum they have got a lot of uh, applications so i have a detailed discussion on them in my next video so if you like the video please subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell so that you can get notification for the coming videos in this particular series and do share it with your friends i'll see you in my next video